Hey, Google, how's the weather? Right now in Red Deer, it's 20 degrees with showers. Today, there'll be isolated thunderstorms with a forecasted high of 21 and a low of 10. There is currently a severe thunderstorm watch in effect. Thanks, Google. Happy to help. In a awkward position here, but here's a shot of a nice flower. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you map and compass so we can get out of the hostile area and into the safe zone. Oh, the Black Hawk Down map joke again. Ooh. So check this out. I've added a couple things to my bag on the AEDC bag. Made this little lanyard wrist doohickey for the phone tool, the phone gizmo analog watch so what we need to do is i've already double checked before i hiked in here that my compass is set properly we're approximately 14 degrees from magnetic north pole to geographic north pole and uh, we're going to make sure when we reference the map that we have the map aligned because of the roads which i've checked and everything and lived here long enough the roads are set to geographic north pole so we're going to pick two spots that we see maybe in the horizon, somewhere, you know, we're going to look for two spots. We're going to find them with the compass, plot them, make some lines on the map, and then that will give us our exact location right here. So the first one we're going to shoot for is a tower way over yonder. I can only go eight times on this S9, but uh, right in the middle of the screen there, sorry about the movement, that's what we're going for. 338 degrees is what we're looking for. The spot that I found is the tower in Highland Green, used to be AGT, now it's TELUS, right there. So the next thing we're going for is a power substation in the middle of the screen there. Once again, my phone only goes to, or the S9 only goes to eight times, regrettably. Yeah, that's not right at all. I mismarked this thing. Fiddle sticks. I'll double check my numbers and double check my angles, and sure enough, I was out of whack, so I recalculated. That wind is getting the best of me. So from the point up in Highland Green, the point at the substation gives me a location here, just south of the dog park. But yeah, that's how you find your location with a map and compass. Find two landmarks, two reference points. And so now when I look around here, you could use uh, one of these hills off in the distance, especially if you have a topographic map, you know, maybe uh, 
a church or something, right? You just look around you until you can find something like that big tower off in the distance there. Here's a big building here, right? Find something that'll help give you some reference points. Maybe like a big communication tower, right? So there we go. That's how you do some map and compass work. Anyhow, the uh, weather seems to be rolling in that big thunderstorm they're calling for. So I think it's time to get off this person's property here before they shoot me. And uh, let's keep on keeping on. Well, friends, we've gone all over Piper Creek. I've shown you Waska Sioux from 43rd Street to the river. So here's Piper, there's Waska Sioux, and here's where they converge. So you've seen everything south and east and north of here, for the most part, all the way to the river. So now what we're going to do, at least starting today, we're going to go look and see what the Waska Sioux looks like west of the convergence point here. This area here had a lot of rail development back in the day before the environment mattered. And uh, the creek is all really, just all cut up going through this area here. It's not very natural where it flows. It goes through a lot of culverts, goes under the roads, you know, crisscrosses this way and that. It's a very interesting area here, that's for sure. Nice blue sky today. In September of last year, I was showing you guys this remnant of what used to be a rail crossing here, where a rail line crossed over other rail lines. But there you go, you get to see it up close. So this is a much of what Waska Sioux Creek is in this part of the city. Just a lot of culverts and stuff where it just disappears. So here you can see it flows downstream and it's pretty natural coming out of here. But from this point, you've got the culvert and everything upstream of here disappears. So this is where we have to do some detective work. And there you go. Culvert after culvert. So we just came from north to south it was all underground to this point, and then we're going to go and see, looks like that next culvert goes underneath 32nd Street. Well friends, bit of a detour. I ended up finding some stolen property along the way, so I was asked to uh, meet up with some cops over at a liquor store here. So maybe they'll shoot me, maybe they'll shake my hand, and I'll let you know in a bit what's going on. In the meantime, just gonna wait here for the cops. Yeah, it's like all in a line along the road, like someone turned a wall up, wallet upside down and, you know, looking for money, dumping the ID and the cards out of it when they're driving down the road. Well, there we go. That turned out to be a good outcome. The guide reported is, his wallet was stolen or whatever. No longer had the, whoa, there we go. No longer had the driver's license in his possession. So there we go. Now I, 
hold on here. I don't normally, I don't normally smoke, but found a, a random pack of ground cigarettes. So I thought, hey, might as well celebrate having a ground cigarette, right? Here, check this out. Found these, uh, <laughs> oh, here, give you the English side. Risk of blindness. Yeah. Oh, I'm all full. Probably one of the grossest cigarettes I've ever tried. Anyhow, <laughs> yeah, that's the story. Found it and gave it to the cops. They'll give it to him, all the cards and everything. So it's good to go. So, back to that regularly scheduled program. Here's the other end here at 32nd Street. You see it's flowing real nice out of this culvert. So that's where we were earlier. Over there is where I found all that property. So now we'll carry on across 32nd Street. So from 32nd Street south, this is the view. Creek is right beside here. Some nasty stuff, but anyhow, just on the other side of that fence there, and then uh, over this way, it crosses under Taylor, and it'll be on the west side of Taylor Drive. So now here's where we got to go to the other side of Taylor Drive. And here we are, just on the southeast part of the college property. So taking a little break here, now some of you might be wondering, what the helicopter is this guy doing? Well the thing is, my socks got sweaty. These boots are great, they do breathe well, being they're the jungle boots, the hot weather boots. But I don't want my feet getting all chewed up. So letting everything air out, letting everything dry a bit, especially being it's nice and sunny out and there's heat in that asphalt, so might as well. And that'll help dry out my footwear, keep my feet dry. Because if your feet don't stay dry, they'll start getting all chewed up. You get blisters and everything. So there you go. There's a nice little life hack for everybody. Well, friends, thank you for checking out this latest adventure. I really appreciate it. Take care.